general aviation in this country has been part of our being for the last century. And Britain has led aviation in the past and I want to see it lead aviation in the future. You must have been frightened. The pilot was seriously old and experienced and man such as yourself. <laughs> If I had a parasol on my back, I would actually jump out and like, do you know, yeah. Do you mean a parasol or a parachute? Parachute. A parasol might, might not be quite as effective. <laughs> Welcome to the latest edition of Cockpit Conversations, where we put inspirational people on the air and in the air. And my guest today is no stranger to both, because not only is he here radio DJ, like I was in my dim and distant past, but he's also a pilot. So please welcome Will Manning from Capital Radio. I feel like we should do a bit of a, yeah. like a, you know, a crew clap. I'm waving to nobody, it's a bit weird. It's Thanks it, for having me. It is weird. Well, it's great to see you, and I, I was so looking forward to meeting you because of that connection of the, the local radio uh, and also the flying. Yeah. So, so what was it for you first? Was it radio, your passion, or aviation? Do you know what? I, it actually all came at the same time. Really, really weird. It, it's because I lived um, near the airfield that I fly out of now. I've always lived near Denham Airfield. Right. And I've always been on the approach for Heathrow. So I've had the big jets, I've had the small you know, props, and uh, my neck was just constantly up, uh, just looking, to the point where my dad, I, I must have been about six or seven, and my dad was like, right, let, let's let's go to Denham Airfield, and we used to just watch the planes, and I used to say, you know, I want that one when I'm older, um, and we used to go there all the time, and then my dad used to take me to the, the Heathrow, um, I think it was like a car park, where you could buy a Radisson, I think it was, so yep. you could just watch the, the approach on zero nine and two seven and uh, just absolutely obsessed but at the same time being in the car with my mum on a uh, on a school run became hooked on radio and music and yeah these worlds just kind of combined so they've always kind of lived side by side but the the music took the uh took the i guess i, guess I took the professional leap into that yeah and then uh, aviation kind of found its way into my life later on when i when i could afford to to get into it yeah do you, with it being so expensive. do you think you may have become a professional pilot if the radio didn't take off for you I, no because i'm really bad at maths <laughs> like really bad at maths um but traffic you, here by the way 12 o'clock that's good it's great to have another pilot on board when, <laughs> we're, doing, when we're doing this filming yeah. there you go um yeah my mental maths is horrific i failed my maths gcse the first time um and then passed it when i got to college so so, what you're saying is your back timing's no good on the radio either? No, actually, weirdly, my back timing's really good, but that's because we've got computers that do it for me. <laughs> yeah. um, wow, it's a beautiful play. What is that? That's amazing. It might have come out of Old Warden. Really nice. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 was, I kind of looked into doing the, um, the BA, you know, the scheme where they take you on and they pay for it and stuff yeah, like that. The yeah. scholarship, I think, is. Um, but, but no, I, I, was, I was on my way in radio and I thought, actually, I'm really good at this. I'm, I'm, I'm getting traction. There's interest, so let's stick at this. And then, like I said, when I was about 24, 25, I, I took on flying as a as a proper hobby. As a hobby, yeah. yeah. Did you have any uh, radio presenters that were really an inspiration for you, that why you wanted to get into radio? Yeah, so like I said, on the school run, it was always Chris Tarrant, Chris Tarrant doing yeah, Capital yeah. Breakfast. Yeah, and I yeah. just thought, this guy is getting paid. I, just, no, I had no concept of, of, of how good the money was, but I was like, this guy's getting paid full stop yeah. to talk. Yeah. play music and it sounds like he's having the best time ever and he does yeah. it every day it's, it's you know what's not to love about that yeah so um so he was a massive inspiration and then when i kind of got into my more djing side of things so there's a guy like kiss called dj swerve and i used to imitate his mixes and that's how i learned how to do turntablism yeah um and like dr fox doing the pepsi chart back in the day i always wanted to do the chart show he was my kind of like chart idol um and, and yeah i mean 
I'm now on Capital and I do the chart, so it yeah. kind of all worked out. That's really cool. Do you ever get into that DJEs when you're doing your, your aviation uh, radio? Do you know? Radio, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> ATC. Yeah, I'm number three at the whole day. Um, I'm still at number two, <laughs> the 152, and number one. No, no, that, <laughs> I kind of yeah. It's it's so different, isn't it? It's it's uh, it's very separate. But yeah, everyone at, everyone at the school at Denham was like, you you'd be amazing at the um, at the RT at the air. But I was like, it's so different. So yeah, it, I actually struggled a little bit with that. Really, at I'm, the start. I'm yeah, surprised. Just getting the terminology, but I, I've I've got it now. Uh, I guess one of the nice things about and what I enjoyed about uh, being on the radio was meeting all sorts of people that you wouldn't normally get to speak to in in the irregular life. Yeah. So, and you must have met some, some interesting celebrities, any that have been really fun to talk to? Yeah, I mean, uh, I get asked this all the time, but I, everyone, I mean, everyone's generally really, really lovely. Um, obviously, everyone has bad days, um, and so often you, you might get them on a bad day. Yeah. But um, there's, there's, there's really nice people, like, I'm talking, recently we've had people back in the studio, like uh, Niall Horan from One Direction. Yeah. He's the nicest man. Um, Anne Marie, she's always great. The Little Mix girls were in the other week; they're always amazing. Like, generally, people are really, really great, and uh, it's quite. People always go, "Oh, God, who's terrible?" So yeah. they, they want like they want the gossip. Yeah. Uh, but I actually don't really have many horror stories from interviews. There's one or two, and it's like a known thing in the industry that there might be a few people where you're like, "Watch out for them," but it's a few and far between. But you don't want to spill the beans on the video. I know, I'm not going to tell. I can't say. I can't say. So now you have got your license, where do you want to go to? Where, where have you been so far and where do you want to go to? So, Enstone, obviously, I absolutely love Enstone and I come quite often. Um, I have been to Ter Weston a few times, really like going there. Um, where else have I been? Uh, Duxford's on my list, just thinking about where yeah, we're Yeah, uh, we're not too far away. We're too far from Duxford, yeah. are we? Yeah, Duxford's on my list, I need to go there. Um, I'm going to go to Isle of Wight in a few weeks' time. I'm going to take my friends down to Leon Soylent for the day. Uh, uh, like I said to you before we started, I'm going to fly up to Manchester Barton. Yeah. Try their low corridor. I'm trying to just do things that are challenging to me. Different airspaces, different approaches, um, different parts of the UK. This and is also... Oh God. So this is just what I was going to say. This is Woburn Abbey down here. It's a nice little shot of... Uh, yes. Woburn. Beautiful. Wow. Um, and yeah, and also I've got my 172 conversion done now, so I'm going to try and make the most of that and take my family up, because I've not done a family trip yet with all of them. Yeah. So I think that'll be a really cool moment. And I'm trying to take as many friends up as well, just what so they can see, what because they don't really understand what I've been working on for the past year and a half. No. And when they get up there, they're like, oh, okay, I get it now. I now know why you're so obsessed with flying. Because I mean, look, look at this. It's, I know. It's, it's incredible, isn't it? We are, we are incredibly, incredibly lucky. Yeah. What about uh, foreign trips then? Any... any desire to go abroad to France when we're able to of course yeah obviously the 2k is on the on the list um, yeah no, I, I'd, I'd like to go to the um, to the uh, Channel Isles as well do like a, do a little hop of yeah. all three uh, but I've not flown over water yet so I, I think I need to do that with an instructor yeah and, uh, and tick that off I think probably would do a fly-in day when, we, when Covid allows we'll do a fly-in day to, to, to the north of France I think that's what they normally do in the summer and I'll do that with an instructor so I can, you know, just yeah. like see it, you know, know, know what to expect. I think once you've done it, you realise how easy it is. Um, right. And it's, um, yeah, you, you sort of worry about it for the first time and, and all that sort of stuff. But once you've done it, you think, that's just it's easy. And what so, about French ATC? Uh, usually pretty good. Okay. Uh, I've been to an airfield in Paris that uh, insisted at the weekend that I should talk in French. No! Which wasn't, which wasn't good. Cause that's I amazing. I didn't do any French at all. But I literally got what to say off a, f a friendly pilot there. Oh, um, wow. But, um, yeah. Oh, see, I'd crumble. Well, well, yeah. It's only a small airport, but, I mean, that's a nice thing for us, isn't it? That English is the international language of, of yeah. air travel, so you, you're, you're pretty there. safe, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I've done a lot of flying in Europe, but I love the Channel Isles. I'm always going to the Channel Isles if I can. And if you yeah, you might as well hop and do the hop three in a day. So have you done that? Jersey, Guernsey, Guernsey and Alderney, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, very friendly, um, obviously very professional ATC because they've got the commercial traffic going in there. Yeah. But a lot of the guys over there are, are private pilots as well, so right. So they, they know what, what you're about. And, uh, and it's, it's great. And another thing, a place I would recommend to go is the Silly Isles. Cause that is just yeah, actually stunning. That, that's yeah. on my list for July. So yeah, yeah we'll go, I, I think that's like a two and a half hour 
prep. It's it's further to go to the city than it is to go to like the 2K. Yeah, is, which people are, are amazed by. But so yeah. what, what, what what's the airfield like, and what can you do around there? Because that is on my list. It's it's very quiet. The city is. Uh, you can get boats to the other islands as well. Uh, you'd obviously land on the main island, St Mary's. Yeah, but it, it's just beautiful. I imagine it's like Cornwall was okay. 20, 30 years ago. Oh wow, okay. Before yeah. everyone came, people people leave their keys in the car. You know. Oh wow. You can't nick a car. There's nowhere to go, is there? So true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But That's you see, like true. keys rusted in cars and. Wow. Uh, and I just it's it's so lovely it's and and the sea is so pure there it's 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 like being in the Caribbean or somewhere like that wow but a definitely nice airfield a lovely little airfield yeah quite short runways a uh, big hump on the runway uh, a bit off-putting the first time you've done it but um, yeah definitely uh, definitely worth a shout okay. and it's great to see somebody with a PPL who wants to go and do that stuff yeah for sure just you know you, you've got it for a, I've flown around I mean the area we're in right now and you know, I've flown around this area so many times and Yes, it's beautiful, but there's only so many fields you can look at. Yeah. You want to actually go and land and use that PPL for a reason, go places. You can see this traffic here at 12. Yeah, excellent. A glider. glider. Yeah. Yeah, we're just heading up uh, towards uh, Cardington now, you know the old where they do the airships? Yeah. So that'll be a nice, uh, huge, huge visual Cardington. shot. Yeah. Wow. And if you look at them again, compared with a house next door, you yeah. can see how big the scale of them is. That, those houses look like a model village, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they, they That's are. insane. Well, we're just going to head up towards uh, Bedford because I haven't uh, been over Bedford Airfield for uh, for a while. Uh, Bedford Radio, uh, good afternoon. Go on, Juliet, Mike, Kilo Echo. I had that the other day with uh, Benson. <laughs> Hello, anyone? Anyone? And I realised they closed like literally ten minutes before. I was calling for ages. Like I don't want to don't want to do this penetration without you know I don't want to bust the airspace here yeah like, oh they closed at three on a Friday right get it okay is that something you worry about as a new pilot that yes. the, the danger of, of crushing airspace and big time yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really really cautious of it especially flying around Heathrow yeah it's drummed into you from your first lesson about stay at a thousand until you pass a certain point you can climb up to two yeah it's um, it's hammered in so yeah, I actually think learning around there was very beneficial to me because that's always at the forefront of my mind, airspace, 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 which seems to be what people slip up on the most. Yeah. Having and read online a lot. And it should be easy, easy you know, with the, with the likes of Sky Blue, but yeah. not, not to do it, shouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there's no real excuse for that. No. Uh, but we do share the sky with, you know, with, with big aircraft, and you've, you've got to be... Got to respect it. Got to respect it. Yeah. Which is good. So we have give, given Bedford a call. So we've got this nice little runway at Bedford just before the old room where ah, that was there, where, okay. where they park all those cars. Right. I just thought it might be nice to fly down the uh, the centre line, just to uh, just to get some nice visuals for the uh, definitely people watching our little YouTube video. So these classic cars then, or just is think, any old cars? I think they're just uh, manufacturers. You know, new right. cars are just in storage, waiting uh, to be to be collected or to be sold. And there's a racetrack here as well. Uh, there is, is a, yeah, there is, there is a track, isn't there? Yeah, it's a rally school. It used to be a rally school or something, I think, or some sort of school. It's nice to see the airfield still getting used for other things and still be an airfield. Yeah. Rather than just closing it down completely. Yeah, definitely. There's a bit of traffic ahead of us there at uh, 12 o'clock. We have got a traffic alert. I can't so, see yeah. it, actually. Uh, it's uh, below the horizon by about... Uh, Five inches, I think. Oh yeah, I've got Looks it. Like a heli helicopter or a slow. Uh, no, it's slow. Yeah, a slow moving. Uh, yeah, I will. Talking about racetracks, I thought we'll head up towards uh, Santa Pod Raceway and maybe Silverstone. Yeah, lovely. Nice little grass strip here, as well. Looks a bit. It looks like a grass. Yeah. Or well, it just happens to be a field that's. Looks like, like one, doesn't it? Yeah. Have you done a lot of uh, grass strip flying? So yesterday was the first time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely loved it. Uh, met up my mate uh, Ben Atkinson. And there's a guy called Johnny, um, two like pretty big aviation guys on Instagram. Okay. And um, they they fly out of um, grass strips a lot. Johnny, I think I think part owns one. Yeah, it's so nice when you meet people like that. Yeah, and that's what I've realised about this industry actually. And you know, having met you today and been speaking to Sam online and, and people like Ben and Johnny, the, the industry is. Um, Really small. It's, a yeah. bit like, it's actually a quite a lot like radio. Yeah. Really small, uh, but full of really lovely people who've just got aviation in their heart. And it's nice to just meet up with people and just go for flights, just chat about planes and be geeky and not get judged by your mates. You don't really yeah. get it. Because <laughs> yeah. they've got a lot of that. They're like, I don't get it. It's just a plane. Like, yeah, but once you're up here, <laughs> if you could just see. 
It, it, you can it, see what we see. Yeah, it is a bit of a geeky thing, isn't it? It uh, is, aviation. yeah. But also, uh, there's quite a lot of geeky people in radio as well, aren't there? Well, again, I was going to say, that's another massive tie-in. Yeah, we, if you love radio, you're a massive nerd, and I am, <laughs> I am that. Like, through and through, I'm obsessed with everything about radio, from the production to, you know, how things work behind the scenes. But people just think you're cool being in radio, not, yeah, not, I, not like a geek. I don't think I'm cool at all. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm, if you get me talking about radio, I will not stop. Um, and yeah, it's the same with people in, in aviation, isn't it? It's yeah. just, it's in you. You love it. And there's, there's quite a few people who have that connection between radio and aviation. You were talking about some before I didn't know about. Um, but yeah, there's quite a few people. Yeah, there's a lot There's a lot of presenters who also fly. And I, I think it's, um, like, like I said to you on the ground, it's, it's, a, it's like a, a time thing, because radio presenters generally work three hours a day and uh, they kind of need a hobby <laughs> yeah and for some reason we've we've chosen flying i mean the reason being oh this. yeah it's a it's a little bit of a hazy day today it's sunny and, it and warm is. but it's a little bit hazy as he's off in the way uh we must be quite near santa pod race where we just flown very near it or right there oh yeah we have oh, literally yeah. just gone over it oh literally there is, there is a, race, a race going on yet there is yeah Let's just go loop back around there and see if we can get some. It's it's it must be well, I guess one of the first events of that of that kind. Uh, Busy because of, the, of the, lo the lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. Can actually, literally see some people on the track. Just saw two cars come off. Yeah. Oh, there's two more now. That's cool. I've not flown over this before. They're going pretty fast, aren't they? As well. Very. I don't know whether you can see it on the camera, but it's a yellow one on the right hand side. Yeah, it was won that race. It, yeah. Yeah. By a long way. Oh well, on the subject of racetracks, let's uh, we head off towards uh, Silverstone because that's uh, another good little, uh, good little yeah thing over there yesterday. In fact, that's that's where I normally take people on their first flight with me. Yeah, because everyone knows Silverstone, right? Yep. And it looks it looks bloody great from the sky. Just doing a few laps around there. Um, actually, I flew with someone yesterday who works for Red Bull Formula One. Oh yeah. Nice. Uh, so she works at Silverstone all the time. Um, so it's quite cool for her just to see. She's like, oh, I'm, you know, I work in there. It's pretty cool. Just appreciate from above. That's a little fun for her down there. That's cool. So we are literally two and a half thousand feet over Antipod Raceway. What about uh, aspirations for, for radio? You, you mentioned Capital, where you are now, and that's, that was where you wanted to be. Um, okay. And I've just done another three years. Oh, fantastic. So, um, yeah, I'm there, for a, I'm there for a while. That's good. Oh, when I started, I did London Drive, which was four till seven. So we've got all these local stations too, who have a local drive show. Yeah. But breakfast, mid-mornings, which I do, afternoons, evenings, uh, and literally everything apart from four till seven is all national from London. Yeah. Uh, I was doing mid mornings for quite a few years, and uh, it's such a lovely show to do, isn't it? Oh, I think I've got to get up at one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I I do get up at seven, which I know it isn't isn't that early, but it's early enough for me, yeah. especially because I really enjoy a night out, and I try and push it to the limit sometimes. Yeah. Um, on a work night, especially. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't mind getting up maybe at eight, but um, in terms of like your day, you're finished at one and you've got the rest of the day to go and work on whatever you want to go and do next. Yeah. So that's, gr that's, that's great, I love that. Yeah, I think breakfast is nice, but it's, uh, yeah, it takes over your life, doesn't it? I, yeah, I've covered the breakfast show at both KISS and Capital, and, um, you know, if you're doing two weeks cover, even a week's cover, yeah. your body has to adjust to it, and then you are knackered by the weekend. You don't want to go and do anything. No. Yeah, I, I, I'd say I covered breakfast for a couple of months for a station, and, uh, yeah, it, it sort of, yeah, it kills you, doesn't it? Yeah. I remember coming down one, one day into the lounge at about sort of five o'clock in the morning thinking, uh, oh, look, oh, where's the Christmas tree gone? And it was like June. I was like, so out of it. Oh, it wow. was <laughs> It was, uh, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was doing another job as well on the day and it was, uh, you know, it was yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah, it's a lot. It's so, a lot. Uh, yeah, but so uh, I get there. But I used to do Saturday breakfast, uh, which I used, used to love because it got me up for the weekend. Yeah. Finished by 10 o'clock. Yeah. And uh, you've made your money for the day already. Made your money. You've read the papers. Yeah. Uh, you had company of coffee. And uh, there is something very satisfying about being up before the world in that respect. Like I used yeah. to love that when I covered breakfast, like being smug at 4:30, being like, I'm up. I'm now going to get the rest of the UK up. That's a that's a really cool feeling. Yeah. Like the, the kind of the nations relying on you to set the mood for their day. That's a huge thing. That's why the breakfast show is obviously the, the biggest. Cause yeah. You, you know, you're saying you're saying the tone for the day. How did you get your first break? 
Oh, it's such a weird one. I uh, so I started DJing when I was ten, doing kids parties. Yep. And uh, you know, literally school like school disco vibes. Yep. Playing all of the hits, chart stuff, and then I like I said, my music taste changed, and I become obsessed with hip hop and R and B, and I, I I became obsessed with turntablism. Twelve o'clock. Oh, here we are. There's one. Oh one yeah. Mile. Um, yeah, I became obsessed with turntablism and, and DJing and scratching and beat matching and all the all the things that come with that. And so I took that on really seriously. And I had a video on Facebook that someone from the BBC saw. And he messaged me asking if I was into presenting. And I was like, yeah, really want to do presenting, but I have no idea how to actually get a break. Because it's all about who you know, right? Yeah, definitely. So um, he gave me a chance to record demos for six months that oh, we put wow. forward to the BBC. And uh, yeah, they took me on. BBC Radio One Extra took me on when I was 15 to do some cover work when people were ill or on holiday. Nice. And that was my first big break at the BBC on a massive national station. I was rubbish. <laughs> I was absolutely useless at the job. Um, but from that, it gave me the confidence and you know, it gave me a taste for it. And that's when I knew, right, this is what I want to do. Um, and then from then, I joined Bauer and Kiss and the Hits Radio and then Capital. Well, we're just flying over Silverstone. There seems to be some racing there today. Yeah. Uh, not the F, not the F1. Three o'clock. High left. Then one. Three o'clock. Oh, I can see him. Yeah, he's just above us. He's uh, almost doing the same as us, and just having, oh, a, look okay. at, having a look at Silverstone. Uh, we're just a bit lower than him. Yeah, there was uh, there was a race happening yesterday as well, actually. Yeah, you, you sound like you got a good break there. My my first break was reading travel news, which I was right. also pretty used to that as well. But yeah, see, every, everyone has a different way in. There's, you know, I don't know anyone with the same story of getting into radio. That's why when people say, you know, what do you recommend? How do I do it? It's really hard. Traffic. Four o'clock. High. Oh, it's less getting busy, isn't it? One mile. Yeah, I think it's because we're everyone's having a look at Silverstone, like yeah. you thought your mate had yesterday. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, I think we've seen Silverstone, so we'll move away from the traffic. I think it would be a good idea. We left the Silverstone circuit and headed back to the airfield, but with another aviator on board, there was one obvious thing on my mind. Well, I'll try as uh, as I'm with a fellow pilot to make this a decent landing. <laughs> but, <laughs> and then there's always that pressure, isn't there? <laughs> but it's been great to meet you, and uh, thanks for sharing your stories about radio and and flying as well. Oh, you're welcome. And thanks for having me. Uh, holding for aircraft, uh, about to take off. And I uh, wish you every success with your trips as well, because uh, you've got some great trips planned there. And yeah. it's great to see somebody who's getting out and about. Uh, Golf Kilo Echo, he's turning final, uh, 08 to land. Kilo Echo, 08 hard is occupied. Watch out, visual. Go, go, go. Kilo 131, John Wick. one, Roger. Uh, that was alright, wasn't it? That was a smooth one, was, Mate, nearly on the numbers there, that was lovely. On the centre line, wow, really nice. Yeah, I've got about 800 hours now, so it helps a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, I can imagine <laughs> so. <laughs> this runway always deceives me a bit, obviously, with this slope up as well. Yeah. And there's oh, another one from Denham, yeah? Oh, you wait till you get to the city, then, you want to see a slope. Uh, you'll, that's you'll, what I was thinking, I was thinking of this one when you mentioned that. You'll love that. <laughs> You can listen to Will Manning on the Capital Radio Mid-Morning Show, weekdays 10 to 1, and on the official Big Top 40, Sunday 4 to 7. Catch me on the next edition of Cockpit Conversations. Please subscribe and like the video so we can attract more great guests like Will. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>